Welcome to the Amron Communications Channel. This is John Jacob Schmidt. In the last video, we covered installing and configuring FL Digi. Well, in this video, we are going to cover the configuration and setup of FL Message and importing your custom forms. We'll get right to it. Before we get into the configuration of FL Message, there's one other setting that I recommend. I use it, and that is an FL Digi. Let's open that back up. And from the file drop down, go down to Text Capture and check that box so that it will capture your text. What that does is create a log of all of the text that you've received inside this text receive window. And that will be in your FL Digi folders placed down here. It will look just like this. And that's all of the text that you've received in your receive pane. It's a great way to go back through and review information that you've captured earlier. Now we'll go ahead and close FL Digi. We won't be needing that for a while. So first thing is to configure uh, the settings by clicking on the config tab and you're going to add your personal data here. By default, it comes as no call or N0 C-A-L-L. -L. So we'll go with our made up call sign. This is, what do we say, W-X-Y-Z. All right, that looks like a real uh, call sign. And the date and time format, you want to set it up by year, month, and day, and then hour, minutes, Zulu time. For files, there's nothing that needs to be done here or radiogram. Go into ARQ and click Sync Modem to FL Digi and leave this checked, everything else by default. And go ahead and close. The next thing we need to do is add our custom forms. FL Message is a companion program with FL Digi for filling in pre-formatted forms. You see the form drop-down menu. FL Message comes with Civil Air Patrol and Royal Air Force Air Cadet forms. IARU forms, ICS, which is Incident Command System. And in fact, Amron uses the ICS 213, that is in our SOI, which is a great general messaging form, especially if you are interacting with uh, other amateur radio operators during disasters who might be working for, say, Ares. And then some of your other forms are MARS, your Military Auxiliary Radio Service, uh, Radiogram, Red Cross has forms. And a lot of these are really good forms, but they just didn't quite meet the needs that we were looking for. So we've had some really great talented Amron members over the years who have the skills and have customized forms for Amron. And those will go in the custom drop down, and you can see there's nothing in there. So we're going to add those now. Open up your browser and navigate to amron.com. It's A M R R O N.com. Up in the upper right hand corner, you'll see forms, a forms tab. When you click on that, it will open up the forms page, and you're going to scroll down until you find HTML forms. These are the custom forms that you will be adding to FL Message. Click on the zip file here and it will automatically begin downloading. And there's two of them because I had tested this previously. Uh, open up your location folder. And what we're going to do is copy this folder. And we're going to paste it in the FL Message folder. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. And in FL Message from the File drop down, click on Folders, 
click on custom, double click, right click and paste. Now this is a zip file, so you're gonna have to unzip it and you will right click and then extract all. And we'll just drop them right here, extract them here. And there are all of our custom forms. But they're one level deeper than we need them. So highlight all of these and cut. And go back to your custom folder and paste. There we go. So all of the Amron custom forms are in there, including the README file, which I strongly recommend. FL Message won't recognize these until you close out and then reopen a fresh instance of FL Message. Go up to the Form tab, and from the drop-down, hover over Custom, and there's all of our forms. So we'll go ahead and uh, select, let's say, a SITREP. This is the raw formatted data that you will be uh, filling out in the form. So you can either view the form or edit the form. Click Edit. And that will open the form in a browser. So this is where you can fill out all of your information to you, from me, this is routine, the state, uh, we'll say uh, Montana, grid, we'll just put something in there. This is local date time group. You can see the proper formatting here. There will be future videos on what forms to use for what situation and how to fill out each one of these forms. So this is just a test uh, sit rep and click submit. And we'll get that out of the way. And everything we just typed in that form is now populated here. And then you go ahead and save it. File and save. And it will direct you to your ICS messages folder. Same as when you receive a FL message file. So let's go ahead and cancel that. And let's go up to the file to show you where your messages go when you receive them. Once you receive it, where does it go? Where is it stored? How can I pull it back up and review it, print it, make it into a PDF to hand to my pastor, to my county commissioner, uh, what have you? Okay, uh, you will go down to File and then Folders and then ICS for Incident Command System. This is the default file path where all of these files that you receive or create are saved and then open up messages. And uh, there are some test messages that I was uh, working with a little bit earlier, including the, the Amron intelligence brief is in there as well. So here's your file path right here. Uh, once you click on the file drop down menu here, click on folders, it will take you uh, to your NBEMS ICS messages folder. There's your file path. Remember that. So now we'll do a test. Uh, we will receive a FL message situation report. So we're just sitting there monitoring the airwaves. We will open up FL Digi. And we have our companion FL message, which does not even need to be open. Because as you remember, when we set up FL Digi, our settings uh, were told to automatically open FL Message as soon as it detects. So to demonstrate that, let me close FL Message. And we'll turn on our shortwave receiver. Go up here and switch this back to our 40 meter frequency, 7110, 900 on the waterfall, Contestia 4250. And our RX ID is on, of course. So whatever mode is transmitted will detect that. It will switch our mode to the incoming mode that's being used and uh, begin decoding. I have my HF rig uh, into a dummy load, uh, but being in the same room, it uh, still radiates enough for this shortwave radio to pick up. So I won't necessarily be transmitting this, 
I'll just be going into a dummy load and picking it up uh, out of the airwaves uh, right here in close proximity. And we'll turn that off. That's what it sounds like. That's what MFSK32 sounds like. As you can see here, uh, we automatically switched to MFSK32 uh, as soon as this ID was recognized. And there it is. You see the beginning and the ending of this file being sent. It is a sit rep and it is uh, wrapped. And that's what FL Digi is detecting as we watch this raw data come in, that raw data will populate all of the fields of a situation report. It, it will uh, automatically open FL message, and we'll go ahead and speed this up. And there it is. As I mentioned, it automatically opened FL message because it detected this wrap uh, here at the beginning and or the end and the beginning of this file. It automatically opened FL message and it is telling it that it is a sit rep form here. If you do not have this form, then you will see a pop up that looks like this telling you that you're missing the custom form sit rep version five HTML. Uh, and it won't open. And if that happens to you, you can still read the raw data and still get the information right here in this pane. Now, remember I was saying uh, to turn on your text capture. If you close out FL Digi and then open it, all this will be lost. But if you create that log, you can say, oh, darn it, my computer shut down or I accidentally... Uh, I don't have FL message set up yet and or I set something up wrong and it didn't open and now I've lost that really important message that came in. You can go to File, Folders, and then FL Digi Config and it will open up your FL Digi folder and your text is saved by the date, FL Digi and then 2025-0702, double click on that. And that opens up a text file showing everything you've received. And well, there it is. There is the message that you just received or people chatting back and forth, keyboard to keyboard text. It's all saved right here. So you can refer back to it uh, uh, in case you need to you know, revisit that and uh, get the information. Okay. Let's go back to our FL message form. Now, this looks really nice, but it's all in raw form. You want something that's properly formatted, something you can save as a PDF or print out or send as an attachment to someone else so that they can open it up in their FL message. But let's take a look at what this looks like when you view the form. It opens it in your browser. So now you can see this in all of its glory print it out in its uh, properly formatted form. So one of the benefits of this is having the forms downloaded ahead of time. So all you're transmitting is this right here. It wouldn't be practical to send the entire form and this allows you to uh, avoid having to send everything in the form. Let's take a look at one of these forms because this entire form is all code. The size of the font, the type of the font, the drop down menu options, all of those, the size and dimensions of every field and every box and the layout is all code. And this is what that form looks like. So you don't have to send all of this. That is an incredible amount of information to have to send over the air. And that's not even containing any report or the contents of a situation report. That's just the form itself. So FL message allows us to just send the raw data 
automatically populating the form on the receiving end. And this report will be saved inside of your ICS messages folder. And there it is. So we can open that up in uh, text and that's what it looks like. But when you want to view it, it opens up that custom form and there we go. So practice filling out a FL message situation report. Go to your form, your drop down, custom, and find sit rep. Now we're going to edit the form. If you view it, it will not give you the functionality of the drop down menus and uh, the ability to fill in those fields. So click edit form. When that opens in your browser, go ahead and make a situation report based on, I don't know, the road conditions in your area or something from the news, the fire danger, high winds uh, situation, road closures, uh, maybe some type of uh, public service announcement that's been put out. Just practice filling one out of this routine local event or regional, national, or unknown. Videos will be forthcoming on how to fill out each individual form. Whether this is a new event or an update to something that's ongoing, uh, you may want to announce that a situation's been resolved or maybe unknown. And once you fill out your test sit rep, uh, go ahead and submit the form and then save it. Now, this is where you get to properly format the file naming, which will be another video, the file naming protocol. But there are instructions at the top of your form that uh, give you an example of how to name that file. This makes it easier for you to uh, visually uh, cue in on certain components when you have a stack of messages like this, and you're looking for something specific, you're looking for a sit rep, uh, you're looking for something from a particular day, maybe a, something from a certain state. Uh, where was that sit rep? Something about a road being washed out or something. And I know it was in Montana. Okay, there's, there's one from Montana. There's one from Montana. And uh, so uh, it also is uh, keeps it organized and standardized when you're passing this to other people. Everybody's using the standard uh, file naming format. And when you get hundreds of pieces of traffic coming in over the course of an event, this uh, makes it really handy for being able to track down traffic that you're looking for, especially previous days or uh, different locations. And uh, the last three of the their FCC call sign uh, would be included in that. So you would just overwrite this file name with that format. More to come on that. Be sure to check out the next video configuration and setup of FLAMP, F-L-A-M-P, the second of the two companion programs that work with FL Digi. Be sure to like and subscribe, share, comment. Let us know your thoughts and post your questions down below and I'd be happy to answer those if I can. Otherwise, stay safe, be vigilant. And 73. God bless. This is John Jacob Schmidt.